This is Ottawa. In a capital city filled with statues and monuments, one towers high above them all, gazing out over the Ottawa River from Nepean Point. Samuel de Champlain, the founder of Quebec, who first traveled to this place more than 400 years ago. He's one of the best known figures in all of Canadian history, honored in the names of schools, roads, towns, bridges, a lake, a mountain. You'll find monuments like this one all over Eastern Canada. But if you look closely at this particular monument, you might notice something odd. At the base of the statue, there's an empty plinth. There's someone missing. This is Canadiana. Champlain has been standing here for more than a century now, but for most of that time, he wasn't alone. Down here, at the bottom of the monument, there was a second statue. It was the figure of an Anishinaabe scout, representing the First Nations who guided Champlain during his travels through their land, the place we now call Canada. The Champlain Monument was unveiled in 1915, and thanks to its placement up here on the Pian Point, it immediately became one of the most prominent statues in Ottawa. But the monument was a complete mess. For one thing, as far as we know, Samuel de Champlain didn't look anything like this at all. The artist based this sculpture on a false portrait of an entirely different musketeer-looking French dude. And that fancy navigational tool he's holding, the astrolabe, he's holding it upside down. The depiction of the scout was an even bigger mess than the depiction of Champlain. The scout wasn't based on anyone at all. He wasn't an actual person, just a nameless stereotype, an inaccurate, romanticized image of a primitive Indian. And he was clearly portrayed as being less important than the glorious Champlain. He was about two-thirds the height of the Frenchman, and while Champlain was given the place of honor at the top of the monument, the scout was stuck down here at the bottom, kneeling at the feet of the conquering European explorer. The plaque didn't help either. It called Champlain the first great Canadian. The scout wasn't given anywhere near that same kind of respect. In 1967, he was even stolen by university students as a prank before police found him, and he was returned to his spot at Champlain's feet. Far from honoring the indigenous people who were living here when Champlain arrived, the statue was seen by many as an insult. It's been called offensive, demeaning, and degrading. But it wasn't until the 1990s, with the artists' rights having expired and indigenous voices finally getting some attention, that the issue came to a head. The national chief of the Assembly of First Nations, Ovid Mekri, launched a campaign to have the scout moved out of his subservient position. The campaign to move the scout was deeply controversial. The debate divided Ottawa. It's been called the Battle of Nepean Point. The artist's family fought to keep the scout where he was. The artist's great-great-granddaughter claimed the monument was all about partnership, not unequal at all. And most non-Indigenous people seemed to agree. When the Ottawa Citizen ran a poll, hundreds of people called in, and nearly three-quarters of them wanted to keep the scout right where he was. Canadians have a hard time giving up their myths. In the end, it was Chief Macri and the campaigners who won. The National Capital Commission agreed to move the statue. Now, the scout stands here in Majors Hill Park, where he's not forced to kneel at the feet of a European explorer. And just like that, the problem was finally solved. Except, of course, not really. There's still plenty of problems with this statue. The plaque doesn't explain that context, where the scout came from and why it was moved here. It still doesn't give him a name. He's still a false stereotype. And now he stands in a quiet corner of this park, while Champlain still stands in one of the highest profile spots in the entire capital. And all across Ottawa, a city filled with statues, the capital of a nation built on indigenous land, there's still a shocking lack of art by and about the indigenous people who've been living on this land for thousands and thousands of years before Champlain ever set foot in this place.
In the years before and after the Scout got moved, Indigenous artists have had a lot to say about it. One of them is Jeff Thomas, who's taken a whole bunch of photos of Indigenous people either standing with the Scout or on the plinth, where the Scout used to kneel at Champlain's feet. And he's even taken photos of his own son, DJ Bear Witness, from the band A Tribe Called Red. You can check out some of those photos and learn more about his project by clicking on the links that we'll post in the description below, along with some others we think you might like to check out. If you'd like to watch more episodes of Canadiana, you can subscribe here on YouTube. You can follow us on social media at This Is Canadiana. And if you'd like to help us tell these stories, we would be hugely grateful. You can become a patron on Patreon, or you can give us a one-time donation through PayPal. Every little bit helps. I'm Adam Bunch, and I'll see you next time on Canadiana.